What is going on guys and welcome to this weekend's Kerbal Space Program video in which we are going to be constructing a space station but it's going to have a bit of a twist to it. Quite literally, it's going to be a revolving space station and I, th I thought I'd showcase how we're going to go about doing that at the very beginning. I've put this time lapse up. Basically we're going to be doing a stock hinge so that we have a rotating wheel section but the rest of the ship kind of remains static relative to the wheel. Now the way this is accomplished is by having, well we'll essentially be building one craft but then we can separate the two crafts so that the wheel will effectively be a separate vessel compared to the rest of the ship but through kind of a series of, you see these here we've got these tubes uh, and these wheels inside the tubes that kind of guide the thing in place and stop it from deviating too much from its axis um, we can have like a, the, the ship revolve basically. I hope that made sense. Either way you can kind of hopefully get a good idea of what I'm doing here. So I've built the actual axle here that will be for the wheel part and I've added a decoupler and we're going to add this tube piece so what will happen is when we fire that decoupler that nothing will happen because the force percentage is zero but now the axle will be able to rotate freely kind of within the tube piece there that structural pipe I did think about using one of the DLC pipes actually but I just felt this had a better form factor than the others the DLC pipes are either a little bit too wide or a little bit too narrow. So I went with these, and it's quite a big axe actually as far as stock axles go, and there's a couple of reasons for this. First of all, I've never actually successfully built a stock axle before. Granted, I've never really tried to, but I haven't, I don't have much experience in it. And also, this thing is quite a bit heavier than say a propeller. There's a little test by the way, which is what most people use axles for. We're getting quite a big station, so in order to get a bit more stability, I've kind of gone for this double-sided um, support structure type thing. But that's the wheel itself. Now we can add some, I'm just adding these sort of aesthetic -y structural parts just so we can carry on building the station out like that because there's no attachment points to that decoupler because it's attached to the to the structural fuselage there. In order to use the offset tool and sort of drag parts out further than you're quote unquote supposed to be able to, what you do is you click the offset tool but then hold down shift as you do it and then you can move parts kind of as far as you want away from them and that's pretty much a standard thing to do when you're building axles or you know stock stock propellers, any, anything like that really. So I didn't really go for anything special with the uh, the habitation ring, just a standard, a simple octagon, just because I find it quite difficult to get perfect circles with the stock parts. I thought, oh, I'll just make an octagon because it looks, it looks fine. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the construction phase, so we can do a nice cinematic zoom in to the launch pad. We don't need to see the construction of the rest of the rocket, to be honest, because it's nothing. It's all pretty standard fare. We've just got four really big boosters strapped to it with a central core that will do the um, curb into MUN transfer and obviously MUN circularization as well. We actually ended up having a little bit more fuel than I thought we needed because I forgot to, um, you can see the nose cone just above the orange tank in the middle stack. That's actually detachable, but I forgot to enable crossfeed, so I thought we had less delta V than we did. So uh, we do have a little bit of excess fuel at the end of this mission. But the orange tank there is part of a refueling bay on this station. Uh, so it's disabled and not actually draining any of that fuel during the launch. It probably would have been more efficient to just use the fuel from that tank and then do a separate refueling mission later. But hey, I'm lazy. So so yeah, hope this adds a little bit of a twist to the space station thing because I know I did a space station last week. But I did say last time that I was planning on doing another space station this week because uh, I was kind of doing like a soft recreation of the Lockheed Martian program, which consists of an LEO, Low Earth Orbit Station, a Lunar Station, and a Mars Station uh, with some Mars Ascension vehicles. And then we can carry on expanding on that vision and create some Duna surface colonies, all that stuff. I'll probably take a break from stations next week, possibly, and do something else just so it doesn't get too repetitive. Uh, but yeah, that's why I'm doing kind of... So I don't want to get too repetitive, although I did upload a video today, and a lot of people were saying, oh, you're just milking views, because it was a... It was a music video of my space shuttle video. I uploaded that. A lot of people wanted the music video, so I uploaded it. And then people complained that I was milking views. So I don't know what to do. I don't know what you people want. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to do what's best. It's not like I can even make money from that video, let's face it. It had copyrighted music, but whatever. Um, this isn't the most efficient ascent, by the way, for those watching. I, I kind of was a little bit too uh, ag aggressive with my gravity term, but we did have a little bit more fuel than we really needed, so it wasn't too much of a big deal. I planned on detaching the, uh, the four big stacks before we completely circularized so that they wouldn't be left floating around in space, either in orbit or in kind of cis, uh, Kerbin, Mun uh, space. So just before our periapsis reaches the Kármán line, we'll just detach them and let them tumble back to Kerbin. Uh, but yeah, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here, so we did not really talk about that just yet. And there we have the map screen there, so you can get a beautiful appreciation, hopefully, of our, the visual mods, which are, as always, our environmental visual enhancements, stock visual enhancements, and scatterer and planet shine. Just in case any of you are wondering what those visual mods are, that's them there. 
And now, as I say, we're just going to time warp up to uh, our apoapsis. We could do the bulk of our um, orbital insertion burn using the remainder of the fuel in the four uh, peripheral stacks. But as I said, just before we circularize, we'll ditch them and then finish the circularization with the central core. So again, just to uh, avoid leaving any debris in orbit, which is kind of something I've been striving for in this in this safe file, at least not leaving any orbit orbital debris. So yeah. Uh, not much reason for it really, I mean, you can just terminate things in the, in the tracking station and that's the same as just not leaving it in orbit, but whatever, just the, the perfectionist inside me isn't satisfied with that solution. And with that, we have ourselves a Kerbin orbit. So we could do the standard kind of, you know, Kerbin to Mun transfer that most of you probably don't really need much assistance on at this point. Just drag the moving around, get yourself an encounter, and we're actually going to be putting ourselves in a collision course because we have a second stage, well, well not a second stage, but we have another stage we want to ditch, the uh, the nose cone of this rocket, which was which I put on top of that orange fuel tank as I mentioned earlier, just to make this thing a little bit more aerodynamic, although that's always a bit of a long shot considering just how completely hor horribly aerodynamically shaped it is, but it adds a little bit, I, I think, maybe. That nose cone at the front has a bit of fuel in it, so you can transfer all that fuel down into the lower core and uh, detach the nose cone once we're on a collision course with the MUN, again, just to make sure it doesn't get left in orbit. We've got a nice little panoramic view. I actually really like this shot, actually. It kind of looks like this is a science fiction kind of spaceship, really, not just a space station. I don't know, just kind of a nice little angle. I don't know. It's hard to talk about things when nothing's happening, but now something's happening. We can talk about that. There goes our apoapsis, and there's our MUN encounter. So we're going to do a few short puffs of our engines so we can get ourselves on a collision course, and then we'll detach that fuel tank after we've drained its fuel and put it in the main tanks. And then we'll just do a quick retrograde burn just to put ourselves on a well, non-collision course around the MUN. I'm going to be setting this so it's kind of the, our orbit around the MUN will be with its rotation so that we can kind of use it as a refueling outpost. If there are ships on the MUN that are stranded, like they have enough fuel to get into MUN orbit but no further, then we want to try and make it as efficient for those landers to get into orbit as possible, which would be going with the MUN's rotation. Granted, it's not a huge fuel saving on the MUN, but it is something. So that's the reasoning behind that. I went with this altitude around the MUN just because, I don't know, it just felt like it really looked quite good on the map screen. <laughs> there was no reason for this altitude really. In fact, it probably would have been cooler to have it a little bit lower so we can get some nice sweeping panoramas of the MUN landscapes, but you know, I didn't think of that at the time. So we can just fire up the engines here. So the space station itself, I believe, is entirely stock. I'm just sort of eyeballing the screen now. Well, when, when the ship was on screen at least. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I can't see any uh, any uh, DLC parts on there. I am using the DLC parts for this booster here, which has a probe core on it, so we can actually crash it into the MUN and, and the space station, <laughs> uh, uh, just to make sure, again, as I mentioned earlier, not to leave anything left in left in space. Think of the uh, think of the children and all that. Very aggressive <laughs> with the time warp there, but it doesn't it doesn't matter. So we'll have to quickly go to the tracking station and find our station, which I've named the Ferris Station because it's like a like a Ferris wheel. That's all I got. I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, then we can actually try. And actually, no, we don't want to get it just yet because we need to finish setting up this station. So this is a kind of like standard fare for my single launch stations at this point, where we can kind of detach the various parts, fly them into position, and redock them. So we can have a bit more of an interesting aesthetic rather than just having it be this sort of straight thing, <laughs> for want of a better term. I don't know. So we've got these solar arms here, they just have their own probe cores and monopellant and we can just dock them onto these arms here. You can see those science juniors there, there's those weird sort of telescope pieces. Well, they are telescopes. Those are actually in the stock game for anyone wondering. I don't see them used very much ever, to be honest. They are a fairly niche item. In fact, they were originally a mod, but like an official mod. It was a mod developed by Squad, but now they're in the stock game. They're used for kind of scanning for asteroids, so two is completely overkill. But, you know, I just did it mainly for the aesthetics, as is the case for pretty much every space station in this game. There's no reason to really build space stations in Kerbal Space Program, unfortunately. I mean, yes, you can use the science labs, which are very, very powerful. I don't want to say overpowered, but what well, they are, but they're just very powerful. So it kind of makes sense from that regard. But uh, at least space stations of this magnitude are definitely just purely kind of for the ego and aesthetics only. So yeah, just get ourselves nice and far out and then do some puffs with the monopellant. I didn't do a great job aligning the docking ports on this time. Generally, I find it's much easier when you right-click kind of the frontmost part and click uh, aim camera. Just makes it far easier to see where you're going. And that's it. That's the station all assembled. So before we get to uh, testing out the ring, we can uh, deploy the uh, big commutatron and we can also deploy those big solar panels as well. Again, we didn't need that many. I, I'm kind of wasting my breath at this point saying that a lot of this is overkill because 
I mean, look at it, it's ridiculous, but it looks nice anyway. <laughs> so uh, yeah, now we can uh, get to trying out detaching the uh, the ring. So you can zoom in, decouple it. That's just, uh, there we go. So we've switched to the ring now, and as you can see, we are now floating independently from the rest of the ship, but we're not kind of like deviating along the X and Y axis, just the Z axis, as in back and forth, not up and down and side to side. So this is a good start. Now we can just turn on SAS, and hit E, or Q, whichever one you feel like really, and wait for it, there we go. So the actual central core is loaded with batteries and RTGs so that uh, the power consumption won't become compromising for it. I don't know if I did enough actually, <laughs> but uh, seems to be okay. And there we are. So the practical application, rather than, not, rather than just looking cool, which is, let's face it, the only reason I did it in this save, <laughs> is uh, you can kind of have artificial gravity with rotating rings. So by standing on the outside of the ring, the, centripe the centripetal force um, will kind of like hold you against the floor, if that makes sense, and basically be a simulation of gravity. Not great on this for a couple of reasons. First of all, I didn't do any calculations in terms of the radius uh, and the speed necessary to revolve this to simulate 1G in the periphery of the ring. Also, it's not a complete, it's not a perfect sphere, so that's kind of thrown it off a little bit. And also, I uh, put the the uh, the crew modules upside down, so actually you'll just be thrown against the ceiling of the modules rather than pressed against the floor. So, it's a good cosmetic thing as a functional item. It's not the most practical, and also. Just from like a purely pedantic point of view, there's no way of uh, transferring the crew from the station to the ring without doing an EVA, which uh, could be quite interesting, getting them to get, get back on after doing an EVA with the ring still rotating, but uh, well, whatever. Here's a nice little view of uh, the cockpit, or one of the command modules anyway. Command modules? Crew pods? I can't remember what exactly the game calls them now. I, I didn't play this game. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it was quite a... It feels, it feels like quite a short video, at least. It's not, it's not as long as last video, I guess. It's By my modern standards, it's quite short. But I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. It's just something I've always wanted to do, really, a revolving space station with a stock rotating part. So I'm glad that we could cross this off the bucket list. And in fact, I've, I've never actually done a MUN space station either, so that was cool to get done as well. But on screen are some links uh, to some other videos if you want to click those. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do. Uh, that's in the description, as well as links to my Patreon and my Discord server if you want to get involved with the community there. But I hope you enjoyed this video very much. And, uh, you know, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day very much. <laughs> Good goodbye.